Hi everybody. Today we're going to uh, look at another type of wave called an electromagnetic wave. Um, how sort of it compares to a mechanical wave and what makes it sort of similar and what makes it different. Uh, I'm going to use EM for electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves. Um, the biggest difference between an electromagnetic wave and a mechanical wave is that an electromagnetic wave does not require a medium in order to travel. Remember, all mechanical waves needed a medium, like air, water, something to travel through. But an electromagnetic wave can travel through the vacuum of space. It does not require a medium. So now how does it do it? Well, it contains both an electric and magnetic field together. And together, these two fields sort of sustain each other uh, in order to carry the wave along, to carry the energy along. Again, a wave may, basically is just a form of energy. Now, that means an electromagnetic wave is a traveling wave. It's not a standing wave. Um, it also happens to be a transverse wave. Okay, so all EM waves are traveling transverse waves. Now, this was first discovered by a guy named James Maxwell through something he did called a thought experiment. I'll give you an idea of what he was doing. Now, Maxwell was more of a mathematician uh, than he was really a scientist. Um, but he had read uh, some papers written by various people on electricity and magnetism. And he realized, looking at a couple of basic principles, that if we have parallel plates and we hook them to a voltage source, and well, what happens is that positive charge starts to build up on one plate and negative charge builds up on the other plate. But while this is happening, there is a current that flows out of the one side and back into the other. Now, that shouldn't be possible because there's a break in the circuit by the gap between the plates. Now, Maxwell also knew from his reading that because of those charge plates, there was an electric field that existed between those plates. He also knew that if there was a current carrying wire, that that current carrying wire had a magnetic field traveling around it. Okay, so now that magnetic field would look like X's on the inside and dots on the outside. Because remember, it kind of goes in a circle around it. So it goes in on the inside and comes out on the outside. So what Maxwell realized that that magnetic field must continue along with that el electric field. In other words, the two must sort of move together across that open gap. And that's really his way of unifying the idea of electromagnetic waves. Okay, the fact that electricity and magnetism can move as one together. And it transports that current, transports that energy across that gap. Now, his experiment was entirely on paper. A guy named Heinrich Hertz eventually proved it with a rather simple experiment. Basically, Hertz took a high voltage generator and he kind of jammed some wires into it, bent into this kind of funny little shape. And then on the other side of his lab, he kind of hooked up another little curved set of wires. And when he fired up the generator, sparks jumped across that gap there. But pretty much simultaneously, sparks started jumping across this one that wasn't even connected across the room. So Hertz realized Maxwell was right. Somehow there was this invisible wave, this electromagnetic wave, that was transporting this energy across the room without it being seen. Now, what he also, what Hertz had unknowingly done, is invented basically the first radio transmitter. Because that's what basically radio, cell phones, all these things do. They take energy converted in this electromagnetic wave and send that signal to a receiver or an antenna where it's received. Uh, an Italian by the name of Marconi figured that out and actually invented the first radio. Now, the other principle of electromagnetic waves that is very different from mechanical wave is that all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, particularly in a vacuum. Uh, but they all travel at light speed. Now, we've seen the wave equation, where velocity equals wavelength times frequency. Well, this is a same version of it, where our velocity is c, the speed of light. Okay. 
So for example, let's say you have a radio wave at 88.5 megahertz. Okay, now properly converted, of course, that's 88.5 times 10 to the positive 6 hertz. And we want to know its wavelength and its period. Well, again, the wave velocity equation is V equals lambda f. But because it's an electromagnetic wave, we're going to replace that with the speed of light, c. Okay, and c is always the constant 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, the speed of light in a vacuum. So this is 3 times 10 to the 8th, wavelength we don't know, 88.5 times 10 to the 6th, which gives a wavelength of 3.39 meters, okay, kind of rather long wavelength. How do I get that period? Well, if frequency is the inverse of period, then period is the inverse of frequency. So the period of that signal would be 1 over 88.5 times 10 to the 6th, which is a period of 1.13 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds, so a very short period. And that's basically all there is to calculating things around electromagnetic waves. Now, what they, of course, discovered is that there are all kinds of forms of electromagnetic waves. They come in all different um, frequencies and wavelengths. And um, what that led to is the idea of something called the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay? And basically, because all EM waves have a constant velocity, the speed of light, as wavelength decreases, the frequency will increase. But also the energy goes up more and more. Okay? So the spectrum is just simply that range of all these different wavelengths and frequencies. So this is sort of a diagram of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, down here is where we have our lowest frequency and our lowest energy waves. Okay, now these are associated with radio. Um, long wave radio, short wave radio, AM, FM radio, things like that. Um, these all have very, very low frequencies, uh, but very large wavelengths, and also are kind of rather low energy. Uh, microwaves are also considered to be sort of a low energy wave. There's a medium energy section which is associated with light. IR stands for infrared light up to UV, ultraviolet light. Uh, now you'll notice this tiny little gap here is what's called the visible spectrum. Okay, this is what the human eye can actually detect. Okay, these are sort of the colors of the rainbow that um, Roy G did. The red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. By the way, there is no indigo. Um, that's not actually a true color of the spectrum. It's only red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. There's no, no eye in there. And then at the far end, highest frequency, smallest wavelength, and highest energy are what are known as our high energy electromagnetic waves. Um, ultraviolet also drifts into here. They're dan very dangerous UV rays. Um, X-rays and gamma rays, these are all sort of your high energy radiation. Very deadly in many cases. So that's basically what an electromagnetic wave is. Okay? Again, it differs from a mechanical wave because it does not require a medium. But an electromagnetic wave is a traveling transverse wave. And it is sustained by its own electric and magnetic fields as it travels along. Again, there's sort of low energy, low frequency, high wavelength waves at the radio range, uh, medium energy, medium frequency, smaller wavelengths associated with light, and high energy electromagnetic waves, uh, which have large frequencies and very small wavelengths. And that's basically it. We'll see you next time.